Willie. It's all right. I came back. Why? What happened? Did something happen? No, nothing happened. You didn't smash the car, did you? I said nothing happened. Didn't you hear me? Don't you feel well? I'm tired to death, Linda. Couldn't make it. Just couldn't make it. Where were you all day? You look terrible. Well, I got up as far as a little above Yonkers. I stopped for a cup of coffee. Maybe it was the coffee. Yeah. The car kept going off the road onto the shoulder, you see. Maybe it's the steering again. I don't think Angelo knows the Studebaker. No, it's me. It's me. I'm going along 60 miles an hour. Suddenly, I don't remember the last five minutes. I, I can't seem to keep my mind to it. Damn, arch supports are killing me. Take an aspirin. I'll get you an aspirin, dear. That'll soothe you. No, you see, I was going along. I was fine. I was even observing the scenery. Imagine me looking at the scenery on the road every week of my life, but it's so beautiful up there, Linda. The trees are so thick. The sun is warm. I open the windshield. Let the warm air bathe over me. Suddenly, I'm going off the road. See, I tell you, I absolutely forgot I was driving. If I'd gone the other way, across the white line, I might have killed someone. So I went on again, and five minutes later, I'm dreaming again. I, I have such thoughts. I have such strange thoughts. Willie, talk to them again. There's no reason why you can't work in New York. They don't need me in New York. I'm a New, uh, New England man. I'm vital in New England. But you're 60 years old, dear. They can't expect you to keep traveling every week. Got to send a wire to Portland. I was supposed to see Brown and Morrison tomorrow morning, show them the line. Damn it, I could sell them. Why don't you go down to the place tomorrow and tell Howard you've simply got to work in New York? You're too accommodating, dear. If old man Howard was alive, I'd be in charge of New York now. That man was a prince. He was a masterful man. That boy of his, that Howard, he don't appreciate. First time I went up north, the Wagner Company didn't know where New England was. Well, why don't you tell those things to Howard? I will. Well, I definitely will. The boys home? They're sleeping. Happy took Biff on a date tonight. It was so nice to see them shaving together, one behind the other in the bathroom and going out together. Notice the whole house smells of shaving lotion. Figure it out. You work a lifetime to pay off a house. You finally own it and no one to live in it. Did say anything after I left this morning? You shouldn't have criticized him, dear, especially after he just got off the train. You mustn't lose your temper with him. When the hell I lose my temper? I ask him if he's making any money. Is that a criticism? Well, how could he make any money? Such an undercurrent in him. He became such a moody man. Did he apologize when I left this morning? He was crestfallen, Willie. You know how much he admires you. I think when he finds himself, then you'll both be happier and not fight anymore. How's he going to find himself on a farm? Is that a life? A farm hand? He's finding himself, Willie. Not to find yourself at the age of 34 is a disgrace. Trouble is, he's lazy. Biff is a lazy bum. Why did he come home? I'd like to know what brought him home. Well, I think he's lost. I think he's very lost. Biff Lohman is lost. In the greatest country in the world, a young man with such personal attractiveness gets lost. And such a hard worker. That's one thing about Biff. He's not lazy. Never. No. I'll see him in the morning. I'll have a nice talk with him. Get him a job selling. He could be big in no time. Remember how they used to follow him around at high school? When he smiled at one of them, their faces lit up. He'd go down the street. Willie, I bought a new kind of American type cheese today. It's whipped. Why do you get American when I like Swiss? I thought it would be a change. I don't want a change. I want Swiss cheese. 
Why am I always being contradicted around? Well, I thought it would be a surprise. Why don't you open the window, for God's sake? They're all open, dear. They boxed us in here. Bricks and windows, windows and bricks. The street is lined with cars, not a breath of fresh air in the neighborhood. The grass, some girl you can't raise a carrot in the backyard. Should I had a law against apartment houses. Remember those two beautiful elm trees out here when Biff and I hung the swing between them? Should have arrested the builder for cutting them down. More and more I think of those days, Linda. Huh? This time of year was lilac and wisteria, and the, and the peonies would come, and the daffodils, such fragrance. Well, people had to move somewhere. Yeah, there's more people now. That's... Oh, I don't think there are more people. There's more people now. That's what's ruining this country. The population is getting out of control. The, the competition is maddening. Smell the stink from that apartment house next door. Another one on the other side. How can they whip cheese? Go on in, dear. Try some. And be quiet. You're not worried about me, are you, sweetheart? Mm. You've got too much on the ball to worry about. You're my foundation and my support, Linda. I won't fight with him anymore. If he wants to go back to Texas, let him. He'll find his way with him. Sure. Some people just don't get started till later in life, like Thomas Edison, or, I think, or B.F. Goodrich. One of them was dead. I'll put my money on Biff. Really? If it's warm on Sunday, we'll ride out in the country and open the windshield and take lunch? You can't open the windshield on the new car. Why, you opened it today. No, I... I Isn't that peculiar? Isn't that remarkable? That's the most remarkable thing. What, dear? I was thinking about the Chevy, 1928. We had that red Chevy. Isn't that funny? I could have sworn I was driving that Chevy today. Well, that's nothing. Something must have reminded you. Remember those days? Huh? I mean, Biff used to Simonize that car. The dealer refused to believe there was 80,000 miles on it. <laughs> no, you go and close your eyes. I'll be right in. 80,000 miles! Uh, you smashed the car up again. This is on the middle shelf here. Uh, 82,000 <laughs> He's gonna get his license taken away if he keeps up like that. I'm telling you, I'm getting nervous about him, Biff. I drove into the city with him last week. He stops at a green light, and then it turns red, and he goes... What a simonizing <laughs> job. I'm going to sleep. Hey, funny, you know, Biff? Us sleeping in here again? The old beds, all the talk that went across these two beds our huh? whole lives. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of dreams and plans. <laughs> About 500 women would like to know what was said in this room. Hey, remember that big Betsy something? What the hell was the name over on Bushwick Avenue? The one with the fake collie dog? Yeah, <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> Hey, you taught me everything I know about women. Don't forget that. I bet you forgot how bashful you used to be, especially with girls. Oh, yeah, I still am, Biff. It's just that I control it more. That's <laughs> all. You know, I think I got less bashful and you got more so. What happened, Biff? Where's the old confidence, the old humor? What's the matter? Why does Dad mock me all the time? Oh, he does it. Ah, uh, everything I say, there's a twist of mockery in his face. I can't get near him. He just wants you to make good, that's all. I think it's the fact that you're not settled down, that you're still kind of but, up but in the air. There's one or two other things depressing him, Happy. What do you mean? Never mind. Just, uh, just don't lay it all to me. But if you just got started, then... 
Hey, I mean, is there any future for you out there? I tell you, Hap, I don't know what the future is. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to want. I spent six or seven years after high school trying to work myself up. Shipping clerk, salesman, business of one kind or another. To devote your whole life to keeping stock or making phone calls or selling or buying. To suffer 50 weeks of the year for the sake of a two-week vacation when all you really desire is to be outdoors with your shirt off. Oh, you really like it on a farm? You can turn out there. Ah, I've had 20 or 30 different kinds of jobs since I left home. It always turns out the same. That's why I came home now, I guess, because I realized that this farm I work on, it's, it's spring now there, see, and they... They got about 15 new colts, and there's nothing more uh, inspiring or, or beautiful than the sight of a mare and a new colt. And every time spring comes to where I am, I suddenly get the feeling, my God, I'm not getting anywhere. What the hell am I doing? Playing around with horses, $28 a week. I'm 34 years old. I ought to be making my future. And, and that's when I come running home. And now I get here, I, I don't know what to do with myself. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm like a boy. I'm not married. I'm not in business. I just, uh, um, I'm like a boy. Are you content, huh? Hell no. Why? You're, you're, you're making money, aren't you? Yeah. All I could do now is wait for the merchandise manager to die. What if I get to be merchandise manager? Mm. He's a good friend of mine. Just built a terrific estate on Long Island, lived in it for two months, sold it, and now he's building a new one. He can't enjoy it once it's finished. And I know that's just what I would do. I don't know what the hell I'm working for, but then it's what I always wanted. My own apartment, car, plenty of women. Still, I'm lonely. Listen, why don't you come out west with me? Hey, you and I, sure, huh? Sure, maybe we could buy a ranch, raise cattle, use our muscles. Men built like we are should be working out in the open. The Loman Brothers. Sure, we'd be known all over the country. Oh, Biff, that's what I dream <laughs> about. You see, Biff, everybody around me is so false. I'm constantly lowering my ideals. I tell you, have we weren't brought up to grub for money. I don't know how to do it. Neither can I. Well, let's go. The only thing is, what can you make out there? Well, look at your friend. Builds an estate, hasn't the peace of mind to live on. Yeah. But when he walks in the store, the waves just part in front of him. That's $52,000 a year coming through the revolving door. And I've got more on my pinky finger than he has in his head. Uh, I'm going to show some of those pompous, self-important executives over there that Hap Loman can make the grade. Then I'll go with you, Biff. We'll be together yet, I swear. Let's go to sleep. <laughs> hey, are you? I guess we didn't settle anything, huh? I just, uh... I got one idea I think I'm gonna try. Yeah, what's that? You remember Bill Oliver? Oh, sure, hey, Oliver's very big now. Well, when I quit, he, he said something to me. He put his arm on my shoulder. He said, uh, Biff, if you ever need anything, come to me. I remember that. Well, I, I think I'll go to see him. If I could get 10000 or, uh, or even seven or $8,000, I could buy a beautiful ranch. Biff, I bet he backed you, because he thought highly of you. I mean, they all do. You will like, Biff. With the ranch, I could, I could do the work I like and still be something. <laughs> I, I just wonder, though, if Oliver still thinks I stole that garden of basketballs. Oh, he, he probably forgot that long ago. It's almost 10 years. You're going to wash the engine, Biff? Shh. Huh? <laughs> Doesn't he know Mom can hear that? Sweater dirty, Biff. Now, isn't that terrible? I'm telling you, you got you got to stick around. You can't leave, Biff. I don't know what to do about him. It's getting embarrassing. Ah, uh, what Simon I think. I'm on searing that. But go to sleep, Biff. But talk to him in the morning, huh? Hey, what? Hey, what? Watch those hubcaps. Oh, with her in the house, God. brother. The stupid. Sleep, Biff. No kidding. Bib, you got a date, huh? Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Don't make any promises. No promises at all, because a girl, you know. Yeah, you're too young, Bib. 
to be thinking seriously about girls. Too young entirely. You want to finish your schooling first. Then, when you're all set, there'll be plenty of time for girls for a boy like you. I guess so. The girls pay for you. <laughs> you really must be making a hit. I've been wondering why you polish the car so carefully. Hey, hey, Biff, Biff, what about the hubcaps? Take a chamois to the hubcaps. And happy. Use a newspaper for the windows. It's the best thing. How's that pop professional? That's terrific. Terrific. Great. Yeah. Hey, over in Albany, I saw a beautiful hammock, Biff. What do you say next week I buy that hammock? We hang it between these two elm trees. Won't that be something? Hey, Pop, I'm losing weight, you notice? Jumping rope's good, too. Hey, Pop, ah. see the new football I got? Coach wants me to practice my passing. What, the coach gave it to you? Well, I borrowed it from the locker room. <laughs> oh, come on now. I want you to return uh, I told you you wouldn't like it. Well, I'm bringing it back. Well, he needs a regulation ball of practice with, doesn't he? Coach will probably congratulate you on your initiative. Gee, we're lonesome for you, Dad. Lonesome, huh? I miss you every minute. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you a secret. One of these days, I'm going to have my own business. I'll never have to leave home again. Like Uncle Charlie, huh? Bigger than Uncle Charlie, because Charlie's not liked. He's liked, but he's not well liked. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you go this time, Pop? Well, I got my car, went up north to Providence, and met the mayor. He was sitting in a hotel lobby. What'd he say? He said, morning. I said, you got a fine city here. And uh, <laughs> I went on to Waterbury, big clock city. Famous Waterbury clock. Yeah, I'd love to come with you sometime, Pop. As soon as summer comes. You promise? Oh, you, Hap, and I, I'll show you all the towns. America's full of beautiful towns, you know, and fine, upstanding people, and they all know me. Oh, I got friends. I can park my car in any street in New England. The cops protect it like their own. <laughs> this summer? Yeah, you bet. We'll take our bathing suit. Right. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. You're nervous about the game? Oh, not if you're going to be there. Listen, Pop. This Saturday, just for you, I'm gonna break through for a touchdown. When I take off my helmet, that means I'm breaking out. Well, they hear there's some boss now. Ben, where are you? You're supposed to study with me today. Bernard, look at Bernard. What are you looking so anemic Come about? On, Listen, Bernard. let's fight. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Biff, I heard Mr. Birnbaum say that if you don't start studying math, he's gonna flunk you and you won't graduate. Pop, you didn't see my sneakers. Hey. Just because he printed University of Virginia on his sneakers doesn't mean they have to graduate him. What are you talking about? With three universities offering him scholarships, they're going to flunk him? What are you such a pest? Don't be... What an anemic. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting for you in my house, Bill. <laughs> uh, Bernard's not well liked. Well, he's liked, Pop, but he's not well liked. That's right, Pop. That's what I mean. He can get the best marks in school, you know what I mean? But when you get out in the business world, you'll be five times ahead of him. That's why I thank God Almighty I got a couple of Adonises here. Uh, be liked and you'll never want. Take me, for instance. I never have to stand in line to see a buyer. Willie Loman is here. Uh, I go straight through. Did you knock him dead, Pop? I knocked him cold in Providence. I slaughtered him in Boston! Oh. <laughs> Hello, dear. Sweetheart! How'd the Chevy run? Chevrolet is the greatest car ever built. What, you let your mother carry the wash in by herself. Yeah, huh? boy. Come on. Oh, <sighs> did you sell anything? Oh, yeah, I, I was selling thousands and thousands, but I just had to come home. How much did you do? Well, I didn't figure it up yet. I, I, I saw... 200 gross for the whole trip. 200 gross? Well, that makes $70 and some pennies. Oh, that's very good. What do we owe? Well, on the first, we owe $16 on the refrigerator. Why 16? The fan belt broke, and that was $1.80. But it's brand new. The man says that's the way they are. Till they work themselves in. There's nine sixty on the washing machine, and you owe Frank for the carburetor. That's three dollars and a half. Oh, I'm not going to pay that man. Damn Chevrolet! They ought to prohibit the manufacture of that car. Odds and ends, it all comes to around one hundred and twenty by the fifteenth. One hundred and twenty. I got Linda. If things don't pick up, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, next week you'll do better than ever. Yeah, I'll knock him dead next week. I'll go to Hartford. I'm very well liked in Hartford. Yeah. Trouble is, people, Linda. Don't take to me. Oh, don't be foolish. No, 
I know it when I walk in, they, they, they seem to laugh at me. Now, why? Why would they laugh at you? I don't know why. I can't stop myself. I talk too much. A man ought to come in with a few words. Uh, Charlie. Charlie's a man of few words, and they respect him. You don't talk too much. You're just lively. No, I, I'm, I'm foolish to look at. I <laughs> You're the handsomest man in the world. Oh, no, Linda, no. To me, you are. The handsomest. <laughs> and the boys, Willie. Really. You men are idolized by their children the way you are. <laughs> You're the best there is, Linda, you know that? You're a pal. On the road, on the road, I want to grab you sometime and just kiss the life out of you, because I get so lonely. Especially when business is bad and there's nobody to talk to. I got to think maybe I won't sell anything anymore. There's so much I want to make. Me? <laughs> you didn't make me, Willie. I picked you. You picked me, huh? <laughs> I did. Oh. I've been sitting at that desk watching all those salesmen go by, day in and day out. <laughs> but you've got such a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have such a good time together, don't we? Uh, why do you have to go, <laughs> huh? My sisters will be scandalized. When will you be back? Oh, two weeks ago. Will you come up again, huh? Sure thing. <laughs> Well, I'll see you the next time I'm in Boston. I'll put you right through to the buyers. Well, bottoms up. <laughs> you just kill me, Willie. <laughs> you kill me. And thanks for the stocking. Oh. I love a lot of stocking. Well, good night. Good night. Keep your pores open. <laughs> Miss Mary. There's no reason. No, I'll make it all up to you. What's that? Oh, my stockings. I'm mending them. They're so expensive. Linda, I won't have you mending stockings in this house. Throw them out. Where is he? If he doesn't study. You'll give him the answers. I do, but I can't on the regents. That's a state exam. They're liable what? to arrest Where me. Where is he? I'll whip him. Bip! Bip! He's got to give back that football. It's well, not nice. Why is he taking things? He's too rough with the girls. All the mothers are afraid of him. I'll whip him. <laughs> Shut up! Mr. Birnbaum says he's stuck up. Get out of here! If he doesn't buckle down, he'll flunk me. He's I... right, Willie. You've got to do something about There's it. There's nothing the matter with him. What do you want him to be, a worm like Bernard? He's got spirit. Personality. He's loaded with it. Loaded! What's he stealing? He's giving everything back, isn't he? Why is he stealing? Why did I tell him I never in my life told him anything but the decent things? Why is he stealing? All right, huh? come on. Why does she have to wax the floors herself? Every time she waxes the floor, she keels over. She knows that. Shh. Let's take it easy now. What brought you back tonight? I had an awful scare. I nearly hit a kid in Yonkers. God, why didn't I go that time to Alaska with my brother Ben? Ben, that man was a genius. He was success. Incarnate. What a mistake. He he begged me to go. Pop, I told you I'm gonna retire you for life. You'll retire me for life on your 70 damn dollars a week and your women and your cars and your apartment. And you'll retire me for life, dear God. I couldn't get past Yonkers today. Where are you guys? Where are you? The woods are burning. I can't drive a car. Is everything all right? Yeah, Charlie, everything's fine. What's the matter? Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
I heard a noise. I, I thought maybe something happened. <laughs> uh, can we do something about the walls? No, you sneeze in here, and in my house, hats blow off. Take it easy, huh? What are you doing up? Hmm? Uh, I couldn't couldn't sleep so good. I got a, a heartburn. Now. You don't know how to eat. You gotta know about vitamins and things like that. Okay. Come on, let's shoot. Tire you out a little. Huh? What is it with these vitamins? It builds up your bones. Chemistry. Yeah. Well, there's no bones in a heartburn. Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you, uh, what are you doing at home? I had a little trouble with a car. Hmm? You want a job? I've got a job. I told you that. What the hell do you keep offering me a job for? All right, all right. Don't get insulted. But don't insult me. Do you want me to go? I don't understand it, Charlie. He's going back to Texas again. What the hell is that? Well, let him go. Let him go. He won't starve. None of them starve. Just forget about him. What have I got to remember? See the ceiling I put up in this room? Yeah. Yeah, that's a real piece of work, all right, huh? Putting up a ceiling is a mystery to me. How do you do it? What's the difference? Well, talk about it. What, are you going to put up a ceiling? How could I put up a ceiling? Well, what the hell are you bothering me for? I'm getting awfully tired, Ben. Oh, good, good. Keep playing and make you sleep better. Hey, <laughs> did you call me Ben? That's funny. For a second there, you reminded me of my brother, Ben. I only have a few minutes. I must make a train. William, there are several properties I'm looking at in Alaska. You never saw him again, huh, since that time? Didn't Linda tell you a couple of weeks ago we got a letter from his wife in Africa? He died. So this is Brooklyn, eh? Well, well maybe you're in for some money. Nah. He had seven sons. There's just one opportunity I had with that man. Opportunity is tremendous in Alaska, William. Surprised you're not up there. Sure, tremendous. Huh? Mother living with you? No, she died a long time ago. Oh. Too bad. Fine specimen of a lady, Mother. Hmm? I'd hope to see the old girl. Who died? Heard anything from father, have you? How do you mean, who died? What are you talking about? William, it is half past eight. No, no, that's my bill. Well, look, I quit the ace. Well, if you don't know how to play the game, I'm not going to waste my money on well, you. Well, that was my ace. When did mother die? Long ago, from the very beginning. You never knew how to play cards. All right, all right. The next time, I'll bring a deck that's got five aces. What? Oh. Uh, ignoramus. So you are William. I waited for you so long. What's the answer? How did you get started? I was so young, I was about three or four years old. I remember you going down some open road. I had a faulty view of geography, William. I discovered after a few days that I was heading due south. So instead of Alaska, I ended up in Africa. The Gold Coast? Principally diamond mine. Boys! Boys! <laughs> This is your Uncle Ben, a great man. Ben, tell my son. My boys, when I walked into the jungle, I was 17. And when I walked out, I was 21. And by George, I was rich. See what I've been telling you? The greatest things can happen. That's just the way I'm bringing them up, Ben. Rugged, well-liked, all around. Yeah? Well, hit me there, boy. Hard as you can. Oh, oh no, sir. <laughs> Come on, get to my left, yeah. Good boy. Good boy. How's that, Ben? Good boy. <laughs> hey. Gee. Never fight fair with a stranger, boy. You'll never get out of the jungle that way. Boy. 
Go over to where they're building the new apartment house. Bring some sand. We're going to rebuild the entire front stoop right now. Watch this, Ben. Yes, hey, if they steal any more from that building, the watchman will put the cops on them. You should have seen the lumber those kids brought home last week. At least a dozen six by tens worth all kinds of money. I gave them hell, you understand, but I got a couple of fearless characters. Lily, <laughs> the jails are just full of fearless characters. And the stock exchange, friend. <laughs> Where the rest of your pad? My wife bought them. <laughs> All you need now is a golf club. Huh? You can go upstairs and go to sleep. Between him and his son, Bernard, they can't hammer a nail. <laughs> the watchman's chasing Biff. Shut up. He's not stealing anything. I'll stop by on my way back to Africa, William. No. Ben, Ben, can't, can't we talk? I have a, a solid position here, but I, I feel... Sort of temporary about myself and my boys. William, you're doing first rate with your boys. Outstanding, manly chaps. Man, that's good to hear because sometimes I think maybe I'm not teaching them the right kind. Ben, how shall I teach them? William, when I walked into the jungle, I was 17. And when I walked out, I was 21. And by George, I was rich. Was rich. Well, that's just the spirit I'm trying to imbue them with. <laughs> to walk into a jungle. I was right. I was right. I was right. Willie, dear Willie. It's very late, dear. Come to bed. You're gonna break your neck to see a star in this backyard. You coming in, dear? No, I'm going for a walk. You're in your slippers, Willie. I was right. What a man. There was a man worth talking to. I was right. You're in your slippers, Willie. Uh, I was right. How long has he been doing this? It'll pass by morning. Shouldn't we do something? My dear, you should do a lot of things. But there's nothing to do, so go to sleep. Mom, I never heard him so loud. Come around more often and you'll hear him. He's not like this all the time, is he? When you come home, he's always the worst. Why are you so hateful to each other? Why is that? I'm not hateful, Mom. You know, sooner get in the door than you're fighting. Are you home to stay? I don't know. I want to look around, see what's doing. If a man's not a bird to come and go with the springtime. Your hair. Your hair got so gray. Oh, it's been gray since you were in high school. I just stopped dying it, that's all. Dye it again, will you? I don't want my pal looking old. You're such a boy. You think you can go away for a year and... Biff, you've got to get it through your head that one day you're going to knock on that door and there'll be strange people here. Oh, what are you talking about? You're not even 60, Mom. What about your father? I meant him, too. He admires Pop. Biff, if you don't have any feeling for him, then you can't have any feeling for me. Sure I can, Mom. No. You can't just come to see me. Because I love him. He's the dearest man in the world to me, and I won't have anybody making him feel unwanted and low and blue. You've got to get it through your head. There's no leeway anymore. Either he's your father, and you pay him that respect, or you're not to come here anymore. I know he's not easy to live with. Nobody knows that better than me. Hey! What the hell's the matter with him? Don't! Don't go near him! Oh, stop making excuses for him, will you? He always, always wiped the floor with you. Never had an ounce of respect. He always had respect. What the hell do you know Just about Just don't him? call him crazy. He's got no character. Charlie wouldn't do this, not in his own house, spewing out that vomit from his mind. Well, Charlie never had to cope with what he has to. People so are a lot worse off than Willie Loman. Believe me, I've seen them. Then make Charlie your father. You can't do that, can you? I don't say he's a great man. Willie Loman never made a lot of money. His name was never in the papers. He's not the finest character that ever was. But he's a human being, and a terrible thing is happening, so attention must be paid. He's not to be allowed to fall into his grave like an old dog. Attention! Attention must be paid to such a person. You call him crazy. Oh, my, I didn't no. mean that. A lot of people think he's lost his balance. You don't have to be very smart to know what his trouble is. The man is exhausted. Sure. A small man can be just as exhausted as a great man. 
It works for a firm 36 years next March. Opens up unheard of territories to their trademark. Now in his old age, they take away his salary. I didn't know that, Mom. You never ask, my dear. Now that you get your spending money someplace else, you don't trouble your head with but it. But I gave you money just last, last Christmas. Fifty dollars to fix a hot water heater. It costs ninety-seven fifty. For the past five weeks, he's been on a straight commission, like a beginner, an unknown. Those oh, ungrateful pigs. Are they any worse than his sons? When he brought them business, when he was young, they were glad to see him. Now his old friends, all the old buyers who always managed to hand him some order in a pinch, they're all dead, retired. He used to be able to make six or seven calls a day in Boston. Now he takes his valises out of the car, puts them back again, takes them out again, and he's exhausted. Instead of walking, he talks now. He drives 700 miles. When he gets there, no one knows him anymore. No one welcomes him. What goes through a man's mind driving 700 miles home without having earned a cent? Why shouldn't he talk to himself? Why? Then he has to go to Charlie and borrow $50 a week and pretend to me that it's his pay? How long can that go on? How long? You see what I'm sitting here and waiting for? And you tell me he has no character. A man who never worked a day but for your benefit. When does he get the medal for that? Is this his reward to turn around at the age of 63 and find his sons who he loved better than his life? One a philandering bum? Mom. That's all you are, my baby. You. What happened to the love you had for him? You were such pals. How you used to talk to him on the phone every night. How lonely he was till he could get home to you. All right, Mom. Live here in my room and I'll get a job. I'll keep away from him, that's no, all. No, Biff, you can't stay here and fight all the time. He threw me out of this house, remember that. Oh, why was that? I never knew Because why. I know he's a fake. How a fake? In what way? What do you mean? It's, it's between him and me. That's all I have to say about it. I'll chip in from now on. He'll be all right. I'm going to bed. He won't be all right. I hate this city and I'll stay here. Now, what do you want from me? He's dying, Biff. He's been trying to kill himself. How? The insurance inspector came. He says they have evidence that all those accidents last year weren't accidents. Oh, that's, that's a lie. It seems there's a woman. What woman? What'd you say? Nothing. I said, what woman? This woman was walking down the road. She saw the car. She says he wasn't driving very fast and that he didn't skid. She says he came to that bridge and deliberately smashed into the railing and that only the shallowness of the water saved him. Last month, I was looking for the fuse. The lights blew and I went down in the cellar and behind the fuse box, it just happened to fall out, was a length of rubber pipe, just short. There's a little attachment on the end of it I knew right away, and sure enough, on the bottom of the hot water heater, there's a new little nipple on the gas pipe. Jerk. Did you have it taken off? I'm ashamed to. How can I mention it to him? Every day I go down and take away that little rubber pipe, but when he comes home, I put it back again. How can I insult him that way? If I swear to God, Biff, his life is in your hands. All right, pal. All right. It's all settled now. It's all settled. I've been remiss. I know that. But now I'll stay here, and I swear to you, I'll apply myself. Sure you will. You know, the only trouble with you in business, Biff, was you never tried to please people. I know. Like the time you worked for Harrison's. Bob Harrison thought you were tops, and then you go and do some stupid fool thing like whistling old songs in the elevator. So what? I, uh, I like to whistle sometimes. You don't raise a kind of responsible job who whistles in the elevator. I'm going to say something, Biff, I hate to tell you, but in the business world, some of them Stop think you're the crazy. the business world, I don't care what they think. They laughed at that for years, and you know why? Because we don't belong in this nuthouse of a city. We should be, be mixing cement on some open plain. A, a carpenter. A carpenter is allowed to whistle. Even your grandfather is better than a carpenter. Bernard doesn't whistle in the elevator, I assure you. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you do, Pop. I've never in my life whistled on the elevator. 
And who in the business world thinks I'm crazy? I didn't mean it. They laugh at me. Go to Filene's, go to the hub, go to Slattery's Boston, call out the name Willie Loman, and see what happens. Big. All right, all right. Why do you always insult me? I didn't say a word. Did I say a word? You didn't say all a right. word, Willie. Good night. Good Willie. night. Willie. You just decided. Get tired hanging around tomorrow. You can paint the ceiling I put up. I'm leaving ceiling. early tomorrow. He's going to see Bill Oliver tomorrow, Pop. Oliver? What for? Well, he always said he'd stake me. I'd like to go into business for myself. I thought maybe I'd take him up on it. Isn't that wonderful? Shh, don't interrupt. What's wonderful about it? At least 50 men in the city of New York would stake you. What, is sporting good? I guess so. How much is he giving you? Well, I don't know. I didn't even see him. What are you talking about? Well, well I said I was going to You're see him. You're counting your chickens again? Don't curse in this house. Since when did you get so clean? I won't have that language used to me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's just settle down now. Let's talk some sense now. Listen, Biff, the last time I was in Florida, I got an idea to sell sporting goods. It just came back to me. You and I, Biff, we have a line, the Loman line. We train a couple of weeks, put on a couple of exhibitions, you see? Yeah, now, wait, wait. That's an we idea. formed two basketball teams, two water polo teams, see? We play each other, two brothers, see? It's a million dollars worth of publicity with displays in all the hotels, banners over the ring and the basketball courts, the Loman brothers, baby, we could sell sports. Uh, that's a one million dollar idea. No, I'm, a, I'm in great shape as far as Lick the world together, you guys could absolutely lick the civilized world. Let's see Oliver tomorrow. Uh, Things are beginning to work sh- out. Don't, don't interrupt. Don't wear your sport coat and slacks when you see Oliver. He always liked you know? it. No, he did oh, like he loved you. Will you stop? You know, walk in nice, quiet, fine, serious. Money is to pass. Everybody likes a kidder, but nobody lends him any money. Hey, I'll try to get some myself if I'm sure I can. <laughs> how, how, how much are you going to ask for? Uh, I don't know. No, no, I don't. Don't, don't say G. G is a boy's word. A man walking in for fifteen thousand dollars doesn't oh, on say. On a ten, I think it'd be uh, top. But, don't, don't be so modest. You always started too low. Oliver you know, always had the highest. I'm talk, talk. I, 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 don't, don't yell at him. I was fine. talking, wasn't really, I? He meant it. Don't you. take his side yelling at him, will you? All right. Uh, tell my best to Oliver. He may remember me. Why did you have to start that? Your pajamas are hanging in the bathroom, Willie. Come on in, dear. Say goodnight to him. Don't let him go to bed like that. It takes so little to make him happy. Come along, dear. Mm. What a woman. (laughs) They broke the mold when they made her. You know that, Biff? She got gray. Mom got off alone. I wonder if Oliver will remember him. You think he might? Uh, remember him? What are you crazy? <laughs> if he didn't leave Oliver, he'd be on top of the world now. Huh? Huh. Gee, I'm gonna see Oliver tomorrow. I'm gonna knock him for a loop. Hey, come on in. Tell that to Dad. Let's give him a word. Come on. Come on. Huh? <laughs> I'm uh, glad to hear it. He wanted to say good night to you, Scott. Yeah? Uh, well, what do you want to say to me? Well, just uh, take it easy, Pop. Good night. Yeah, if something falls off the desk while you're talking to Oliver, don't you pick it up. They got office boys. All right, right, all right, Pop. And don't undersell yourself. No less than $15,000. OK, uh, good night, man. Well, you've got greatness in your Biff. All kinds of greatness. Sleep well, Biff, dear. Mom, I'm going to get married. I wanted to tell you. Go to bed, dear. I just wanted to tell you. Keep up the good work. Ah, <sighs> uh, remember that that Ebbets Field game for the championship of the city. Just try to rest, dear. Shall I sing to you? Huh? Yeah, sing to me. And when he came out on the field, huh? he was the tallest, remember? Yes, and in gold. Like a young god. Hercules, <laughs> something like that. The sun, the sun all around him. And how he waved to me from the field with a Representatives of three colleges sitting in the stands, yeah, and the buyers I brought. 
Yeah, and the cheers when he came out. Oh, man. Oh. He'll be great yet. A star like that. <laughs> Magnificent. Can never really fade away, huh? What has he got against you? I'm so tired. Don't talk anymore. Hmm? Will you tell Howard you've simply got to work in New York? First thing in the morning. Everything's going to be all right. Wonderful coffee. Meal in itself. You look so rested, dear. Uh, I slept like a dead man. First time in months. The boys left nice and early, huh? They were out of the house by 8 o'clock. Biff was very changed this morning, dear. His whole attitude seemed to be hopeful. He could hardly wait to get downtown to see Oliver. Gee, on the way home tonight, I'd like to buy some seeds. That'd be wonderful, but not enough sun gets back there. Nothing will grow anymore. Ah, you wait, kid, before we're through. We'll have a place of our own in the country. We'll raise vegetables, chickens, huh? You going to talk to Howard today, dear? Yeah, I'll put it to him straight. He'll just have to take me off the road. Don't forget to ask him for a little advance because we've got the insurance premium. It's the grace period now. That's a hundred dollars. A hundred and eight sixty-eight because we're a little short again. And there's one more payment on the refrigerator. But it just broke. I know, dear, but it's old. Linda, I told you we should have bought a well-advertised machine. Charlie bought a General Electric. He's had it for 20 years. It's still good, son of a... <laughs> Who ever heard of a Hastings refrigerator? Once in my life, I'd like to own something outright before it's broken. Always in a race for the junkyard. All told, about $200 would see us through. But that includes the last payment on the mortgage. After this payment, the house belongs to us. 25 years, huh? Biff was nine years old when we bought it. Well, that's really something, you know, to whether a 25-year mortgage is really a... It's an accomplishment. Ah, goodbye, I'm late. Uh, I forgot. You're supposed to meet them for dinner. Thanks, Chop House, 48th Street and 6th Avenue. We? What about you? No, just the three of you. Biff came to me this morning. He said, tell Dad we're going to blow him to a big meal. Be there at 6 o'clock. <laughs> Linda, that's really something for you. Oh, I'm going to knock that Howard for a loop. I'll come back with an advance and a New York job. You, Linda, will you stop mending stockings? At least while I'm in the house, it gets me so nervous. Please? Ah. Uh, maybe beets would grow there. Hello. Oh, Biff. Oh, I'm so glad you called. Yes, I told him. He'll be there. Six o'clock. I didn't forget. Biff, I was just dying to tell you. You remember that little rubber pipe I told you about? Well, I finally decided to go down in the cellar and take it away and destroy it. But it's gone. Imagine, he took it away himself. It isn't there anymore. Oh. Then you took it. 
No, I was just hoping he'd taken it himself. No, I'm not worried. Because this morning he left in such high spirits, it was like the old days. I'm not afraid anymore. Have a good time with Dad tonight, dear. He may have good news, too. A New York job. Be sweet to him, dear. Be loving. Because he's only a little boat looking for a harbor. Put your arms around him when he comes in the restaurant. Give him a smile. Bye. Goodbye, Biff, dear. Got a minute? Come in, be with you in a minute. I'd like to have a little talk with you. Ever see one of these? Wire recorder, records things. Just got delivery yesterday. I had it home last night. Listen to what I picked up. Uh, the first one is my daughter. Get this. Uh, lifelike, isn't it? Seven years old, Willie. Get that tone. Ah, oh, she's crazy for me. That's me. Oh. <laughs> You're very good. Shh. Get this now. This is my the son. The capital of Alabama's Montgomery. The capital of Arizona's Phoenix. The capital of Arkansas. Five years old, Willie. Really. The capital of California is Sacramento. You're making an ounce the of You get the Colorado alphabetical order. Capital. Oh, the maid. Kick the plug out. That's a wonderful machine. I, I tell you, Willie, this is the most fascinating relaxation I ever found. Yeah, I think I'll get one myself. Sure, they're only about a hundred and a half. Say, aren't you supposed to be in Boston? That's what I want to see you about. You didn't crack up again, oh, did you? no. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> you had me worried there for a minute. Well, what's the trouble? Well, Howard, I've come to the decision I'd rather not travel anymore. Not travel? <laughs> well, what'll you do? Well, you remember Christmas time, you had the party here. You said you'd look for a spot for me here in town. With us? Oh, well, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, I couldn't think of anything for you, Willie. I tell you what, how the kids are all grown up. I don't need much anymore. If I could bring home, well, $65 a week. That... Yeah, but, Willie, you see, I just, our business here is... I'll I, I, I tell you why, Howard. Just between the two of us, speaking frankly, I... I'm just a little tired. Oh, I can understand that, Willie, but you're a road man. We do a road business. We've only got half a dozen salesmen on the floor here. Yeah, well, out I, I never asked a favor of any man. But I, I was with a firm when your father used to carry you in here on his arm. I know that, Willie. Your, your father came to me the day you were born, asked me what I thought of the name Howard. May he rest in peace. I appreciate that, Willie, but there just is no spot here for you. Now, if I had a spot, I'd slam you right in, but I, I just don't have a single solitary spot. Howard, all I need to set my table is $50 a week. Well, where am I going to put you, kid? It's not a question of whether I can sell merchandise, is it? No, but it's a business, kid. And everybody has got to pull his own weight. Yeah. Well, let me tell you a story. Because you got to admit, now, business is business. Business is definitely business. See, but you don't understand this, Howard. Let me, let me tell you. See, when I was... 18, 19, I was on the road already. And there was a question in my mind as to whether selling had a future for me, because in those days, I wanted to go to Alaska. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. See, I was almost decided to go when I, I met a salesman in the Parker house. His name was Dave Singleman. And he was 84 years old. He drummed merchandise in 31 states. And old Dave, he'd go up to his room you understand? Put on his green velvet slippers. I'll never forget. And he'd pick up the phone and he'd call the buyers without ever leaving his room. At the age of 84, he made his living. When I saw that, I realized selling was the greatest career a man could wish for, because what could be more satisfying than to be able to go into 20, 30 cities, pick up the phone, and and be remembered and, and loved and helped by so many different people. 
You know, when he died, and by the way, he died the death of a salesman with his green velvet slippers on in the smoker of the New York, New Haven, and Hartford going into Boston. When he died, hundreds of salesmen and buyers were to his funeral. Things were sad on a lot of trains for months after that. See what I mean? In those days, there was respect, uh, personality, comradeship, uh, uh, gratitude. See, today, it's all cut and dried. You know what I mean? There's no chance of bringing friendship to bear or, or, or personality. They don't know me anymore. Ah, uh, that's just the point, Will. If I had $40 a week, that's all I need. Yeah, I can't take blood from a stone. Howard, the year Al Smith was nominated, your father Did, I've got to see some no, people. I'm talking about your father. There were promises made in this office. You mustn't tell me you've got people to see. I put 34 years into this firm. Now I can't pay my insurance. You can't eat the orange and throw away the peel. A man isn't a piece of fruit. Now pay attention. In 1928, I remember I had a good year. I averaged $170 a week in commission. No, so Willie, you never average. I averaged $170 a week in the year of 1928, and your father came to me. Or rather, it was. Right here in this office, across his desk, he put his hand on my shoulder. You'll have to excuse me, Willie. I've got to see some people. Pull yourself together. Pull myself together? What the hell did I say to him? I yelled at him. How could I? Oh, Frank. Frank, don't you remember what you said to me? Huh? You put your hand on my shoulder and you... Alabama's Montgomery. The capital of Howard. Arizona's Phoenix. The capital of Arizona's Howard. Laura. The well, capital of shut California shut, is shut Sacramento. Now, look, no, I Willie... I gotta get some coffee. I'll, I'll get some coffee. I'll go to Boston. Willie, you can't go to Boston for us. Why can't I go? I don't want you to represent us. I've been meaning to tell you that for a long time now. How are you firing me? I think you need a good long rest, Willie. Yeah, well, but I need the money. I, 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 have, I have to earn. I, or I'll go to Boston. Look, I'll put it kid, on. I'm busy this morning. Howard, you've got to let me go to Boston. I've Come. got a line of people to see this morning. Now sit down. Take five minutes, pull yourself together, and then go home, Willie. I need the office, Willie. Oh, yeah, whenever you can this week, stop by and drop off the samples. Pull yourself together, kid. There's people outside. How did, how did you do it, Ben? Mm -hmm. What's the answer? Did you wind up your Alaska deal already? It doesn't take much time if you know what you're doing. No, Ben. Nothing's working on it. I don't know what to do. Look here, Willie. I bought some timber land in Alaska, and I need a man to look after things for me. Ah, timber land? Me and my boys in those grand outdoors. Linda! Linda! Oh, you're back. I haven't much time. No. Linda, he's got a proposition for me in Alaska. Oh, you're doing well enough, Willie. Well enough for what, my dear? Enough to be happy right here, right now. Yeah, I'm building something with a firm. And if a man is building something, he must be on the right track, mustn't he? I've got to go. No, Ben. I'm telling you, I'm going to get out of here for now. Oh, let him carry the shoulder bars. And look at this boy without a penny to his name. Three great universities are begging for him, and from there, the sky's the limit. Because it's not what you do, Ben, it's whom you know. It's the smile on your face. It's contacts, Ben. Contacts. Goodbye, William. 
No, Ben. Am I right? Tell me, am I right? I, I value your advice. There's a new continent at your doorstep, William. You could walk out rich. Rich. Well, we'll do it here. You hear me, Ben? We're going to do it here. Hey, it's half past one. All right, everybody. Evans Field, next stop, me. You're coming back today, captain of the old scholastic championship team of the city of New York. Oh, God, if Pop remember when I take off my helmet, that touchdown's for you. Uh, <laughs> hey, what's going on? He's playing in Evans Field. Baseball in this weather? <laughs> knock a homer, Biff, knock a homer. <laughs> this is the most important day of his life. <laughs> Willie, when are you going to grow up? Uh, after this game, you'll be laughing out of the other side of your mouth. They'll be calling him another Red Grange. 25,000 a year. Who's Red Grange? Oh, put up your hands. <laughs> Come on up, put up your hands. <laughs> what the hell, you think better than anybody else? You don't know everything, you big, stupid ignoramus. Put up your hands. I know you. Where are you going? What are you walking away from? I know you laugh at me behind my back. Well, you'll be laughing out of the other side of your face before I'm through with you. Touchdown! Come on, win this game! Touchdown! Ha! Ah. Hiya, Jenny! How you working or are you still honest? Fine. How are you feeling? Well, uh, not much anymore, huh? <laughs> Hello, Uncle Willie. <laughs> well, no. Well, what do you know? How are you? Good to see you. Oh, what are you doing here? Oh, just stop by to see Pop get off my feet till my train leaves. I'm going to Washington in a few minutes. Yeah. Come in. Sit down. Well, <laughs> is he in? Uh, he's in the office with his account. Huh? Sit down, Willie. Yeah. Well, uh, what are you going to do in uh, Washington? Oh, it's just a case I've got there. Is that so? What are you going to play tennis there? <laughs> I'm staying with a friend who's got a court. You don't say. I won't private. Tennis court must be fine people of it. They are. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, Dad tells me Biff's in town. Oh, yeah, Biff's in town. He's working on a big deal. Really? Oh. I'm very glad to hear that. Yeah, you know Bill Oliver, big sporting goods man. He wants Biff very bad. You know, he brought him in from the West. Long distance, special delivery, cart, blanche, you know. Your friends have their own private tennis court, eh? I'll... Are you still with the old firm, Willie? I'm overjoyed to see how you made the grade, Bruno. Overjoyed. You know, it's an encouraging thing to see, uh... Mm, yeah. B uh, Biff is doing very big. But now. What is it, Willie? What secret? What secret? How did you... Why didn't he ever catch on? I wouldn't know that, Willie. Yeah, but you were his friend, his, his, his boyhood friend. Uh, one thing I don't understand is life Ended after that Ebbets Field game. On the age of 17, nothing good ever happened to him. Willie, hmm? do you want to talk candidly? Bernard, I regard you as a very brilliant man. I value your advice. Willie, there's just one thing I've always wanted to ask you. When he was supposed to graduate and the math teacher flunked him... Oh, that man ruined his life. Yeah, yeah. But Willie, all he had to do was go to summer school and make up the subject. Why wouldn't he go? Why, that question's been trailing me like a ghost. For the last 15 years, he flunked the subject, lay down and died like a hammer hit him. I... Willie, I remember it was June and our grades came out and he flunked math, but he was ready to enroll in summer school. He but then, But then, Willie, he disappeared from the block for almost a month. And I, I got the feeling that he'd gone up to New England to see you. Did he have a talk with you then? Willie? Hmm? 
Yeah, he, he came up to Boston. Yeah, what about it? Well, just that when he came back, I'll never forget this. It always mystifies me because I thought so well of Biff, even though he'd always taken advantage of me. I loved him, Willie, you know? And uh, he came back after that month and he took his sneakers. Do you remember those sneakers with the University of Virginia printed on them? He was so proud of them. Wore them every day. And he took them down in the cellar. And he burned them up in the furnace. What happened in Boston, Willie? Nothing. What do you mean, what happened? Now, Willie, don't no, get so. You blame me? If a boy lays down. Is that my fault? Now, Willie. Well, what kind of talk is that? What does it mean, what, what happened? Hey, 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 you're gonna miss that train. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> Here you are, Bernard. <laughs> Thanks, Pop. <laughs> Goodbye, Willie. Goodbye, Paul. How do you like this kid, huh? He's gonna argue a case in front of the Supreme Court. Pop. The Supreme Court? Look, I've got to go. Well, goodbye, Dad. Bye. Knock him dead, Bernard! Huh? <laughs> the Supreme Court? He, he didn't even mention it. He don't have to. He's going to do it. You never told him what to do, did you, Charlie? You never took an interest in it. My salvation is that I never took any interest in anything. Now, here's some money, fifty dollars. Well, uh, I got an accountant in uh, here. Charlie, and uh, I, I have to uh, pay my insurance. I, I'll need a uh, hundred and ten dollars. Yeah, I'd draw it out of the bank, but then Linda would know. Uh, it. Sit down, will you, Willie? I'm keeping strict accounts. Yes, uh, sir. Sit down. You'll get every penny back. What are you doing? What the hell is going on in your head? Now, I offered you a job. You can make $50 a week, and I won't send you on the road. I've got a job. Without pay? Why don't you want to work for me? I'm, I'm, I'm offering you a job. I don't want your damn job. When the hell are you going to grow up? Listen, you say that to me again, and I'll wrap you one. How much do you need? I'm Willie? strapped, Charlie. I'm strapped. I was just fired. Howard fired you? That's not known. Imagine that. I, I named him. <laughs> I named him Howard. Willie, when are you going to realize that them things don't mean anything? All you got in this world is what you can sell. You, funny thing is, you're a salesman and you don't know that. Well, I always felt otherwise, I guess. I always felt if a man was impressive and well-liked. Well, why should everybody like you? Who liked J.P. Morgan? Was he impressive? In a Turkish bath, he'd look like a butcher. But with his pockets on, he was very well-liked. Um, now, look, Willie, I, uh, I, I know you don't like me. and oh. no, I, 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 Nobody can say that I'm in love with you, either. No, but, uh, well, uh, uh, I'll give you a job. Just, oh, uh, just for the hell of it, let's, uh, let's put it that way. What do you say? I just can't work for you, Charlie. What's the matter? You, you jealous of me? I can't work for you. Don't ask me why. Yeah, yeah. You have been jealous of me all of your life. Damn fool. Here. Pay your insurance. I'm keeping strict accounts, Charlie. You... It's funny, after all the highways and the trains and the appointments and the years, 
You end up being worth more dead than alive. Willie, really, nobody's worth nothing dead. You hear what I said? Willie. Oh, and, and uh, apologize to Bernard for me. I'm sorry I argue with him. He's a fine boy. They're, they're all fine boys. They'll end up big, all of them. Someday they'll all play tennis together. Wish me luck, Charlie. He saw Bill Oliver today. Good luck. Charlie, you're the only friend I've got. Isn't that a remarkable thing? but I know you. You ain't from Hackensack. Oh, hey, this is better, Stanley. Hey, Stanley, you got a couple of nice lobsters? Don't worry, I don't give you no mice. 100% big. <laughs> How about some wine? It'll top off. No, 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 no. You remember that uh, recipe I brought you back from overseas with the champagne in it? What'd you do, hit a number or something? Nah, it's just a little celebration, my brothers. <laughs> I think my brother pulled off a big deal today. I think we're going into business together. Oh, now that's great. Because, you know, family business, you know what I mean? That's the best. What's the difference? Somebody steals. It's in the family, you know what I mean? <laughs> Shh. Strudel's coming. Oh, no, there ain't no. How did you know? I got radar or something. Oh, Stan. I, uh, I think that's for you, Mr. Holman. Hey, would you like a menu, man? Uh, why don't you bring her? Excuse me, Miss. Do you mind? I uh, sell champagne. I'd like you to try my brand. Stanley, bring her champagne. Yes. That's a charming product to be selling, isn't it? <laughs> it gets to be like everything else, you know, selling, selling. You don't happen to sell, do you? No, I don't sell. Hey, Biffo! Hello, kids. Sorry I'm late. It's all right. I just got. Oh, uh, Miss. Uh... Forsyth. Miss Forsyth. This is my brother. Maybe you've heard of him. Biff, a great football player. Really? What team? Uh, are you uh, familiar with football? I'm afraid not. Well, Biff is quarterback for the New York Giants. Well, I'm very happy to meet That's you. That's my name, Hap. It's really Harold, but at West Point they call me Hap. Isn't that you coming? Busy? Well, I am, but I could make a phone call. Well, why don't you do that, honey, and uh, see if you can get a friend. I'll try. Don't try, honey. Try hard. <laughs> Isn't that a shame now, a beautiful girl like that? That's why I can't get married. There's not a good woman in a thousand. Well, New York's loaded with them, kid. Run it out, will you? I want to say something to you. Hey, did you see Oliver? I saw him all right. Now, now look, I want to tell Dad a couple things, and I want you to help me. What, is he going to back you? Are you crazy? You're out of your head, you know that? What happened? I did a terrible thing today. It's been the strangest day I've ever been through. I'm all numb, I swear. You mean he wouldn't see you? Well, uh, I waited six hours for him, see? All day, kept sending my name in. He even tried to date his secretary so she'd get me to him, but no so. But that's and because you're not showing the old confidence, Biff. He remembered you, didn't he? Finally, about five o'clock, he comes out. He didn't remember me or anything. I felt like such an idiot. Well, did you tell him my Florida he idea? He walked away. I saw him for one minute. How the hell did I ever get the idea that I was a salesman then? I, I even believe myself I've been a salesman for him. Uh, we, we've been talking in a dream for 15 years. I, I was a shipping clerk. Well, what did you do? Well, he, he left, see, and uh, his secretary went out. I was all alone in the, in the waiting room. And, well, I don't know what came over me. Half the next thing I know, I'm in his office. Panel walls, everything. I, I, I can't explain it. I, half, I, I, I took his fountain pen. Did he catch you? Well, I, I ran out. I, I ran down all 11 flights. I, I ran. That was ran, an awful. What did you do that for? I don't know. I don't know. I, I just uh, I wanted to take something. I don't know. Hap, you got to help me. I'm, I'm going to tell Dad. Are you crazy? What for? Well, he's got to understand that I'm not the man somebody lends that kind of money to. He thinks I've been spiting him all these years, and it's it's eating him up. Well, that's just it. You tell him something nice. I can't. Well, tell him you got a lunch date with Oliver tomorrow. So so what happens tomorrow? Well, you leave the house tomorrow, you come back at night, and you say Oliver's thinking it over. He thinks it over for a couple of weeks. Gradually, it fades away, and nobody's the worst. But it'll, it'll go on forever. Look, Dad is never so happy as when he's looking forward to something. Hello, Scout. I've been here for years. Hey, sit down, Pop. You want a drink? Huh? 
Let's, uh, let's get a load on I don't mind. You look worried. No, no. Uh, scotch is all around making double. You had a couple of drinks already, huh? <laughs> Just a couple, yeah. yeah. What happened? Everything go all right? Pal? I, uh, <laughs> I had an experience. Terrific, today. Bob! Is that so? Yeah. Well, what, what happened? I'm gonna tell you everything from first to last. It's, uh, <laughs> it's been a strange day. Uh, I, I had to wait quite a while for him, see? Oliver? Uh, yeah, Oliver, and uh, all day is a matter of cold fact, and, uh, a lot of instances, facts, Papa, facts about my life came back to me. Who was it, Pop? Who ever said that I was a salesman with Oliver? Well, you were. You, you... No, Pop, I, I was a shipping clerk. Well, you were practically a No, sailor. no, let's, let's, let's keep this down to the facts tonight. We're not going to get anywhere bullying around. I, I was a shipping clerk. All right, well, now you listen to me. Why don't you let You're me finish? I'm not interested in any stories about the past or any crud of that kind because the woods are burning, boys. There's a big blaze going on all around. I was fired today. How could you be? I was fired. I'm looking for a little good news to tell your mother, because the woman has waited, the woman has suffered. The gist of it is I don't have the story left in my head. So don't give me any stories about facts or aspects. I'm not interested. Pardon the fish scotch. Yeah. Oh, well, what happened? Did you, did you see Oliver? I did, I did. I saw him. Uh -huh. How could they fire you? What kind of a welcome did he, he give? He won't even let you work in commission. I'm out. Did he give you a warm welcome? Sure, Pop, sure. Well, it, I was wondering was if he'd of, remember uh, you. Uh, see, a man doesn't seem for, what, 10, 12 years to see the kind of welcome he gives. Damn right. Uh, you know why I remembered you? Because you impressed him in those days. Hey, let, let's, let's talk quietly and get this yeah. down to well, the facts, huh, Pop? Kind of a greeting. Did he? Bet he well, put his arm around you, huh? Yeah, he, he kind of He's a fun. fine man. He's a very hard man to see. Told him my Florida idea, Pop. Shh. Oh, how did he react to the Florida? Dad, will you give me a minute to explain? I've been waiting for you to explain since I sat down. What, what was his answer? It's his answer. Hmm? Oh. Dad, you, you're, you're not letting me tell you what I want to tell you. You didn't see him? I did, I did, I saw him. What, did you insult him or something? You insulted him. Listen, will you, will you let me out of it? Will you just let what me out of it? What the hell are you telling me what I happened? I can't talk to him. Mrs. Loman. Mrs. Loman! You had to go and flunk math. Math? What math? What are you talking math, about? Math, math, Now look, math. now look! I'm, I'm gonna tell you what happened, see? And, and, and you're gonna listen to me. I, I waited six hours for this. Fifth flunk math, they won't graduate him. No, but they have to. He's gotta go to the university. Where is he, Beth? There! He went to Grand Central. Grand Central? He must have gone to Boston. Or oh, maybe Willie can talk to his teacher. Oh, that poor, poor boy. So uh, I, I'm washed up with Oliver, you understand? Yeah, don't blame me. I didn't flunk math. You did. What, what pen? Oh, Beth, that was awful dumb. A pen like that's... You took Oliver's pen? Dad, I just explained it to you. You stole Bill Oliver's fountain Dad, pen? I, I never intended uh, to do it. Standish Arms, good evening. I'm not in my room. Dad, what's the matter? Ringing Mr. Loman for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not there! Make Stop good. it! I'll make good, Dad. I I'll make uh, good. I'll you're make no good. good. You're no good for anything. Mr. Loman does not answer. Shall I page him? No! You strike something. No! Pop, 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 Pop no. listen to me. Listen to me. I I'm telling you something good. O Oliver spoke to his partner about the flower idea. Huh? You listen? No, it's going to be all right, Jim. Then you got it? He's going to be terrific, Pop. Then you got well, it. No, no, no. You yeah, see, you I'm, got I'm, it. No, no, I'm supposed to have you... lunch with him tomorrow, Pop, but I, I can't go tomorrow. Why see? not? But the pen. You Pop. tell him it was an oversight. No, I can't say that. You are doing a crossword puzzle and you took it. Look, kid, th wow. those balls, those balls. I, I stole those balls years ago. Now I walk in with this fountain pen. That clinches it, don't you see? I I'll try elsewhere. Listen, you're going to keep that luncheon tomorrow. Yeah. I can't. I got no other uh, Are you spiting me? Spiting hey, me? I'm no I good. Can't hey, you understand that? Cut it out, I'm both no of good. you. Wait. Hey, help me. Someone's at the oh, door, Willie. Really. Letter, letter may not be able to stay too long. <laughs> i got to get up very early tomorrow. i got jury duty. This is my father. Oh, is he? Come on, let's sit down. Willie, are you going to answer the door? Hey. Hey, where are you going? Huh? Where's the door? The door? The washroom. Where's the oh, just, door? Where? Just go straight down. I think it's sweet to bring your daddy along. Well, what's on the program, girls? Where would you like to go,
<laughs> Why don't you do something for him? <laughs> Me? Don't you care about him, huh? Look what I found in the cellar. How can you bear to let this go on? You could help him, Hap. I can't. He's trying to kill himself. Don't you know that? Don't I know it, me. Hap, help him. Help me. I can't bear to look at his face. <laughs> hey, he'll, he'll be all right. <laughs> Don't answer it. Don't answer it. Oh. Come on, let's catch up to Biff. Well, don't you want to tell your father where you're going? Oh, no, that's not my father. He's just some guy. Come on. <laughs> oh, will you stop laughing? <laughs> will you stop laughing? <laughs> oh, you know you ruined me, Willie. Huh? From now on, whenever you come into the office, I'm going to see that you go straight through to the buyers. <laughs> no standing anymore at my desk, Willie. You ruined me. <laughs> well, it's nice of you to say that. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, drummer boy. <laughs> no neat dressing in the middle of the night. Oh. <laughs> Shh. Aren't you going to answer the door, Willie? Maybe the hotel's on fire. Shh. It's a, it's a, it's a mistake. Don't, don't. Well, it's getting on my nerves. There's somebody standing out there. It's getting on my nerves. Right, come on. Don't go into the bathroom. Shh. Shh. And don't come out. Yeah? I, and I think there's a law in Massachusetts, so don't come out. It's a mistake. It's a, there's no fire. Yeah. What are you doing in Boston? Why didn't you answer? Well, I didn't hear. I was in the bath. The door was shut. Did anything happen at home? Dad, I, I let you down. What? Come on, boy. I'll get your morbid. Come on, I funk math. I, I haven't enough credits to graduate. Bernard wouldn't give you the answers? He did. He tried. I only got a 61. And they wouldn't give you four points? Birnbaum refused absolutely. I begged him, Pop. Uh, you, you gotta talk to him. The, the class came right before practice, see, and I, I didn't go enough. Would uh, you talk to him, Pop? He'd like you, you know, the way you could talk to him. Huh? <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> go on. Uh, we'll drive right back. You're on. Tell him I'm checking out. Yes, sir. Hey, see, the reason he hates me, one day, he was late for class, and I, uh, I got up in front of the blackboard and I imitated him. I, I crossed my eyes and I talked with a lift. No. <laughs> the square root of 53. <laughs> and in the middle of it, he walks in. You mean? Is <laughs> somebody in there? No, it's next door. Has somebody got in your bed? Can next... I come in? <laughs> There's something in the bathtub, Willie, and it's moving. <laughs> well, you, know, you go back now. There uh, must be through painting your room by now. They were painting her rooms. So I let her take her shower. Here. You're through painting. You you can this is Miss Frances, if she's a buyer. You can go back, Miss Frances. But Frank. my clothes, I can't go naked into the hall. Come on, get out of here. Ah, uh, you promised me stockings, Willie. I don't have any stockings. You had two boxes of size nines for me, and I want them. I hope there's no one out in the hall, that's all I hope. Are you football or baseball? Football. That's me too. Good night. Well, we're ready to get started. Gonna get to school first thing in the morning. She's a buyer. She buys for J. H. Simmons, lives down the hall. See, they, they were painting. You don't imagine. Biff, she's a buyer. See, she sees merchandise in her room. They have to keep it looking just, just. Come on, Biff. Get my suits, will you? Stop crying, Biff, will you? I mean, I gave you an order, Biff. Is that what you do when I give you an order, Biff? How dare you! Come on, when you grow up, you'll understand about these things. You mustn't 
overemphasize a thing like this, Biff. Come on, now I've got to see Birnbaum. I got to, those points, I, I'll see to it. He wouldn't listen to you. Oh, he certainly will listen to me. Listen, uh, if, if he won't fix the mark, you can go to summer school. What the heck? My boy, she's nothing to me. I was lonely. I was terribly lonely, boy. <laughs> you, you gave him on a mistake. Oh, come on, I gave him Don't touch me, you liar! I apologize for that. You fake! You phony yeah. little fake! Come back! Fake. Here! Or I'll whip you, Biff! I gave you an honor! Bim, I gave you an order! I gave you an order, Bim! Bim, come back here! Uh, Pick it up, huh? Pick it up, Mr. Lowe. What? The boys left with the chippies. They, they said they'd see you home. We're supposed to have dinner together. Can you make it, Mr. Lowman? Yeah, I can make it. I look all right? Oh, sure, you look all right. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. There are seeds store in the neighborhood. Seeds? You mean like to plant? Uh, carrots, peas. Well, there's some hardware stores on 6th Avenue, but I don't think they're open now. Mm hmm. Gotta hurry. I gotta get some seed. And nothing's planted. See? I don't have a thing in the ground. Nothing. Where's Dad? Asleep? Where were you? Oh, well, we met a couple of girls, Mom. V very fine types. Here, we brought you some flowers. Don't you care whether he lives or dies? Nobody's dying around here, pal. Get out of my sight. Get out of here. I want to see the boss, Mom. You're not going near him. Where is he? You invite him for dinner. He looks forward to it all day, and then you desert him there. There's no stranger you'd do that to. Why, well, he had a swell time with us. Listen, when I desert him, I hope I don't outlive the day. Get out of here. Get out of here, both of you. And don't come back. I won't have you tormenting him anymore. Go on, get your things together. You can sleep in his apartment. Pick up your stuff. I'm not your maid anymore. Pick it up, you bum, you! You're a pair of animals. Not one, not another living soul would have had the cruelty to walk out on that man in a restaurant. He was so humiliated, he nearly limped when he came in. Mom, he had a great time with us. Shut up. You, you didn't even go in to see if he was all right. No, didn't. Didn't do a damn thing. How do you like that? Just left him babbling in a toilet. You louse, you. Now you hit it on the nose. Scum of the earth, and you're looking at Get it. out of here. I got to see the boss, Mom. Please, leave him alone. What's he doing out there? He's planting the garden. No. Oh, my God. Carrots, three inches apart. Rows, one foot rows. One foot. Carrots, one foot. Beach. What a proposition. It's terrific. It's terrific because she suffered. The woman has suffered. Man can't go out the way he came in. Man's got to add up to something. Now, I want you to consider. Remember, it's a guaranteed $20,000 proposition. But you don't want to make a fool of yourself. 
they might not honor the policy. Well, how can they dare refuse? Didn't I work like a coolie? Meet all those premiums on a nose, and now they don't pay off? Impossible. That's a point. And 20,000, there is something you can feel with the hand. Uh, it is there. Yeah, no, no. That's the whole beauty of it, Ben. See? I see it shining like a diamond in the dark, hard and, and rough, as you can pick up, feel with your hand. See? Not like an appointment. And it changes all the aspect. Because he thinks I'm nothing, and so he spites me. But at the funeral, that funeral, it'll be massive, Ben. It'll come from Maine, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire. All the old timers. With a strange license plate. Oh, well, that boy will be thunderstruck. He doesn't realize I'm, I'm, I'm known. And he'll see it with his own eyes once and for all. He'll call you a coward. He'll hate you, William. Oh, no, Ben, that would be terrible. Ben, how do you... How do you get back to all those great times, Ben? Hmm? Always some kind of good news coming up. Always something nice coming up again. Ben. Never even let me carry the releases into the house. Ben. Always simonizing, simonizing our little red car. And why can't I give him something and not have him hate me? But you've got to be sure you're not making a fool of yourself. Uh, uh, I have a little seed. Uh, I can go away. Don't bother me. I'm busy. I'm saying goodbye to you, Pop. I'm not coming back anymore. You're not going to see Oliver tomorrow, huh? He put his oh, hand Pop, around your Pop, shoulder get and you... this now, will you? Every time I've left, there's been a fight that sent me out of here. The hell with whose fault it is or anything like that. Let's just wrap it up, huh? Come on inside with someone. No, I don't want to see her. Well, you don't want him calling you yellow, do you? No. This is not your fault. It's me. I'm a bum. Hey, come on inside. No. No. Did you plant, dear? All right, we had it out. I'm leaving. I'm not writing anymore. I think that's the best way, Willie. There's no use drawing it out. You'll just never get along. You're going to wish me luck, Scout? What do you say? Shake his hand, Willie. There's no necessity to mention the pen at all. Dad, I got no appointment tomorrow. Spitey. Shake hands, will you, Dad? Not my hand. May you rot in hell if you leave this house. Exactly what is it that you want from me? I want you to know that on the trains, in the mountains, in the valleys, wherever you go, that you cut down your life for spite. Spite is the word of your undoing. And when you're down and out, I want you to remember. When you're rotting somewhere by the railroad track, I want you to remember. And don't you blame it on me. I'm not taking the rat for this. That's just what I'm telling you. You're trying to put a knife in me. Don't think I don't know what you're doing. All right, phony. Let's lay it on the line. Ah! I just leave it there. Don't move it. What's that? I, ne I never saw that. Now, what's this supposed to do? Make a hero out of you? This is supposed to make me sorry for you? There'll be no pity for you. You hear it? There'll be no pity. You hear the spice? No, you're going to hear the truth. What you are and what I am. Stop Will it! You cut it out The now? man don't know who we are. The man is going to know. I hear this, Willie. This is me. I know you. You know why I had no address for three months? I stole a suit in Kansas City and I was in jail. No. Oh, stop crying. I'm through with it. 
I've stolen my way out of every good job since high school. I never got anywhere because you blew me so full of hot air, I could never stand taking orders from anybody. I had to be boss big shot in two weeks. No, then hang yourself for spite hang no, yourself. No, 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 nobody's hanging himself, Willie. I ran down 11 flights of stairs with a pen in my hand today, Willie, and suddenly I stopped. I, I stopped in the middle of that office building and I looked at the pen and I said to myself, what the hell am I grabbing this for? Why am I trying to be something that I don't want to be when all, all I want is out there waiting for me? The minute I say I know who I am, now why can't I say that, Willie? The door of your life is wide open. Pop, I'm a dime a dozen and so are you. I'm not a dime a dozen, I'm Willie Loman. And you're Biff Loman. Pop, I'm not a leader what? of men, and neither are you. You were never anything but, but a hard-working drummer who landed in the ash can like all the rest of them. I'm one dollar an hour, Willie. I tried seven states and couldn't raise it. A buck an hour, do you gather I'm my meaning? You vengeful, spiteful. Pop, I'm nothing, Pop. I'm nothing. Can't you understand uh. that? There's no spite in it anymore. Uh. I'm just what I am, that's all. Oh. <laughs> Huh? What's the man? What's... what's why is he crying? What? Would, would you let me go? Will you take that phony dream and burn it before something happens? I'll go in the morning. Put him... Uh, put him to bed. He likes me. He loves you, Will. Always did, Pop. Biff. That boy's gonna be magnificent. Outstanding, with 20,000 behind him. Come to bed, dear. It's all settled now. Mm. The jungle is dark, but full of diamonds, Willie. Bob, I'm gonna get married. One must go in to fetch a diamond out. I just wanna let you know. Come, dear. Hmm? You let me sit uh, alone for a while. You go ahead, dear. Everything's gonna be... Go on, dear. You look so tired, huh? I want you in bed. Two minutes. Loves me. Always loved me. Then he'll worship me for this. Yes. It takes a great kind of a man to crack the jungle. Uh, <laughs> can you imagine that magnificence with $20,000 in his pocket? Huh? Willie, come to bed. And when the mail comes, he'll be ahead of Bernard again. <laughs> Did you see how he cried to me, man? Oh, I could just kiss him. Time, William, time. We'll be late. Willie? Now, when you kick off, boy, I want a 70-yard boot. I want you right down the field, under the ball. And when you hit, hit low and hit hard, because it's important. The stands are full of important people. And the first thing you know, Ben, where do I? Ben! How do I? Where are you coming in?
How about it, Mom? They'll be closing the gate soon. He had no right to do that. There was no necessity for it. We would have helped him. Mm -hmm. Come along, Mom. Why didn't anybody come? It was a very nice funeral. Where were all the people he knew? Maybe they blame him. No, no, no. It, it, it's a rough world, Linda. They wouldn't blame him. I can't understand it. Especially at this time. First time in 35 years we were just about free and clear. He only needed a little salary. No man only needs a little salary. I can't understand it. There were lots of nice days when he'd come home from a trip on Sundays making the stoop, finishing the cellar, putting on the new front porch. You know something, Charlie? There was more of him in that front stoop than in all the sales he ever made. He was so wonderful with his hands. He had the wrong dreams. All, all wrong. Don't say that. He never knew who he was. Nobody dares blame this man. You don't understand. Willie was a salesman. And for a salesman, there is no rock bottom to the life. He don't put a nut to a bolt. He don't tell you the law or give you medicine. He's a man way out there in the blue, riding on a smile and a shoe shine. And when they start not smiling back, that's an earthquake. Then you get yourself a couple of spots on your hat and you're finished. No, nobody dares blame this man. A salesman is got to dream, boy. It comes with the territory. Don't say that. Why don't you come with me, huh? I'm not licked that easily. I'm gonna stay right in this city and beat this racket. Loman Brothers. I know who I am, kid. Yeah. All right, boy, I'm gonna show you and everybody else that Willie Loman did not die in vain. He had a good dream. The only one you have to come out number one man. He fought it out here, and this is where I'm going to win it for him. Let's go, Mom. I'll be with you in a minute. Go on, Charlie. I want to, just for a minute. I never had a chance to say goodbye. I don't know what it is, but I can't cry. Why did you ever do that? It just seems to me that you're away on another trip. I keep expecting you. Why did you do it? I can't cry, Willie. I search and I search and I search. And I can't understand it. I made the last payment on the house today. Today, dear. And there'll be nobody home. <laughs> We're free and clear. <laughs> We're free. <laughs> We're free. <laughs>